Vince McMahon wrote every amazing wrestling story ever. Or so some folk would have you think. He's obviously come up with some incredible angles over the years, but when we get into the nitty gritty, there's a host of individuals that deserve some credit, which is what we shall do today. So hello, I am Simon for What Culture. Please do hit that subscribe button. This is 10 unthinkable masterminds behind legendary wrestling ideas. Number 10, Kevin Kelly came up with the Triple H Stephanie McMahon angle. Yep, think about the consequences of this. This absolutely changed the course of wrestling history and kind of amazingly started off with a story that saw Tess try to get together with Stephanie McMahon. Why not? This was all fueled forward thanks to Vince Russo, so when he left for WCW in 1999, there wasn't actually a finish for this, which is when Kevin Kelly had a thought. It came after a company-wide email that had been sent out asking for suggestions, or so it is said, when Kelly was like, well, all right, how about we do this? Because given that to buy themselves some time, WWE had decided to have the British Bulldog hurl a trash can at her. Why don't we say Steph has memory issues? Sure, it is the Attitude Era after all. This would then allow the game to swoop in and use that to wed McMahon against her will, which is as bad as it sounds, until ta-da, it will be revealed that they were in cahoots the whole time. This then launched the mcmahon Helmsley domination faction, and of course in real life, these two are still married today? What a lovely tale. Number nine, Tiger Ali Singh coined one of the greatest phrases of all time. We all wanna be The Rock. Considered one of the greatest wrestlers ever, despite only being active for a cup of coffee, and now the great one rules Hollywood. It has been a mad career. Going back to the grappling, people would actually tune into Raw just to hear what he was going to say into a microphone, and that's amazing. He didn't even have to fall on the floor, he could just talk and bam, superstar. One of his go-tos was asking an unsuspecting wrestler a question and then cutting them off with, it doesn't matter, but here's a spin for you. He didn't really come up with that. Whether intentional or not, Tiger Ali Singh dropped this when doing the always offensive, I'm a foreigner and therefore I hate Americans gimmick. Because he wanted to prove that these heathens would do anything, so of course he invited a woman into the ring to embarrass her. After Tiger asked her name though, he did indeed jump in with a it doesn't matter, so there you go. It didn't have the same impact as when Rocky did it, but that brings us to number eight, Conan O'Brien also got in there first. I mean, here we go. To be fair, this isn't really legendary, but people still do talk about it, so it counts a bit. And we also turn our attention to The Simpsons. We are all over the place today. Because many people will swear blind for smart reasons that seasons one to eight represent the peak of the show. And of course, there's still constant gems wherever you go. It's one of the best programs ever. During this high, one Conan O'Brien was writing for the series. And as a joke, he would say to those on the team when they suggested something he didn't think was very good, that maybe they should go drink a tall glass of shut up juice. Where have we heard that before? There is no gray area with this one either. Writer Tommy Blanchard left late night with Conan O'Brien to work for WWE in 1999, so surely that's how it came to be. Although, yeah, was a slight error. That one never clicked. Number seven, John Moxley wanted to squash CM Punk. John Moxley seems like a good dude. He's also a fantastic wrestler who has lived up to all his potential, and it's why he's so beloved in AEW. The fans can feel it. He's also got a keen ear for the business, which is why, as the rumor goes, he suggested that before their All Out 2022 encounter, he should just squash CM Punk with the world title on the line, and that would be that. Huh. This has led to rumors that Mox maybe, just maybe, could see what was going to happen and was trying to get in there first to protect his aura. Dave Meltzer had backed this report up, and look, it happened. We still got the pay-per-view match, but seeing John take Punk to task beforehand certainly helped his character. How could it not? But there you go. If you saw this and shouted, what? Like Stone Cold Steve Austin, it came from the brain of the man who loves to bleed. Number six, who came up with the Attitude Era logo? Now this thing was iconic, tied into the fact that the period for WWE was massive, but when they did decide to change their logo in 1998, it kickstarted a golden period. It was also just so cool, which helped sell what the company was now selling. And internally, it was referred to the Scratch logo for obvious reasons look closer. Why you'd imagine this was some creation of the design department, though, it actually came from Vince McMahon. Yep. Following two disastrous Raw ratings when they headed overseas, Vince decided everything had to change, including this. It's one of the reasons why Vince Russo also got the green light, as there was no going back. We had to rebuild. Of course, McMahon's original drawing, or so goes the rumor, had some testicles attached to it. Sadly, I'm not joking, but I suppose sometimes you need a terrible idea to spark off a good one, and this was it. Everyone saw the benefit in the black and white motif, and the 
rest is history. Number five, Scott Hall reinvents Sting. If you want to tell me that Tony Khan has booked Sting better than anybody else, I think I'd agree with you. He has been treated so well and as the legend he is, so much so that his status has actually increased and I didn't think that was possible. The level of respect has rocked. It doesn't even matter he's 63 years old because we can just ignore that. And of course the face paint helps. It hides your wrinkles. When we turn the clocks back too, this all came from Scott Hall. As the pair were changing together back in WCW and Steve Borden was thinking about how to reimagine his character, Razor Ramon asked if he'd ever seen the movie The Crow. Because Hall was the best, he followed it up with, I'm not telling you to rip off The Undertaker, but maybe rip off The Undertaker. And this was incredible advice. Sting listened, tweaked it to make it his own, and look what he did. Amazing. Borden himself has always credited Scott for this, as has Eric Bischoff, and the fact he didn't do anything but look down from the rasters for an entire year. This was so cool, somebody today should probably go and rip off Sting. Number four, Vince Russo finds his feet. Vince Russo gets a lot of crap for some of his ideas, and rightfully so. Judy Backwell on a forklift is never going to be justified, and the amount of pole matches he booked was silly. One had Viagra up there. Ugh. It wasn't all bad, though, but anyone saying that it was isn't being fair. While he did over-rely on swerves, when Russo got it right, it was riveting TV, such as it was a night of the 1998 Survivor Series. The finish which saw The Rock join up with the corporation was all-time good, especially as nobody saw it coming. On the Raw beforehand, Rocky had dropped the people's elbow onto Vince McMahon, and now they were buddies. Ah, we'd been screwed. It also had logic as The Rock told us he never forgot the fans had told him to die, which was true. And this turn launched everything between the great one and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Can't argue against it. There were other top moments too. It's just a shame we have to go through the likes of Beaver Cleavage as well. I mean, it's 2023 and I still ask myself, what the flub was that? Number three, the keeper of the forbidden door. It should come as no surprise this one given how much he was involved, but yes, it was Kenny Omega who decided Decided the best way to get the wrestling world talking was to start working with as many wrestling companies as possible. Smart man. After winning the AEW world title, Omega went over to Impact Wrestling and started getting belts over there too, and he made sure the Good Brothers kept going back and forth. Kenny also feuded with the likes of Sammy Callahan and Moose while also mending relationships between All Elite Wrestling and New Japan. This is why Kenta turned up a beach break in 2021. The last ripple of this concept was a huge pay-per-view where the two promotions went head to head, and we got that. It was literally called the Forbidden Door, and it was also amazing. As we speak, rumors have cropped up that number two is on the way soon as well. Why wouldn't you? Not only do you get one-of-a-kind fights, but it did a great buy rate last time. Outdid expectations. The dream would always be a huge wrestling world cup, and no doubt Omega would love that too. Problem is, if you go and ask WWE what they think, they will say no. Number two, the elite helped shape Britt Baker's character. When AEW first launched, Britt Baker was penciled in as their super-duper babyface. This makes sense as she ticked all those boxes, and <laughs> classic wrestling certainly wasn't a bust, but it didn't click as intended. This happens, ship. As this was a time where Cody Rose, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega were very integral to the creative process, they all got together and told Britt to go out there and say that the fans had Whataburger faces. So she was basically calling them fat. We then got to the Jericho Cruise, where Baker fired shots at Tony Schiavone for being a Starbucks barista, which was his other job at the time, and boom! This was money, all of a sudden the crowd started to turn. Britt then used this to recraft her gimmick and look at the success. She began to tease the idea of maybe including a bit more of a bad guy edge, but as soon as those at the top pushed her, we found what we needed. I remember when all of this was happening too, you just knew it was the right call, and it was. Number one, the Money in the Bank ladder match. Now we're never gonna know about this one for sure, but there was a period where it felt like Vince McMahon made all the decisions and flub you if you had any ideas. He didn't care. While there may be some truth to it, let's go back in time and talk about the Money in the Bank ladder match. Regardless whether superstars are able to offer input in 2023 or not, one Chris Jericho felt like he had the platform, and he went to the powers that be with a plan. He saw there was a load of great mid-card talent which didn't have a spot when it came to WrestleMania, so suggested that there could be an annual ladder match that would feature multiple performance. He sat down with the writer Brian Gewurz, who then came up with the kicker, the winner could receive a world title opportunity at a time of their choosing. Here we go. The pair went to Vince with this, who suggested a prop, because of course he did. The briefcase was born. That was a good call, though, because as we know, it would become quite the symbol. And look at this. 
Three humans working together to invent a concept which still exists today. Sometimes things are just meant to be. Know of any other unthinkable masterminds behind legendary wrestling ideas? Maybe you are one and it's great to have you. Please let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like the video, share the video and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Make sure you come give us a follow at WhatCulture WWE and time a minute 316. And there should be a video on the screen right now. I think you should give it a click. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. And I look forward to talking to you very, very soon.